Well, hello everyone, and thanks for joining us today for the introduction to Aspen Discovery. My name is Jesse Zaro, and I'm the Marketing and Outreach Coordinator here at Bywater Solutions, and we will be going through a brief demo of Aspen Discovery, um, how searching functionality works, um, you can see e-integration, um, and, and a ton of other things. Um, before we kick things off, I'd like to do a quick round of introductions. Um, with me today, we have the uh, developer of Aspen Discovery, Mark Noble. I'll let him say a quick hello. Hey everyone, good to be here. Thanks, Mark. We also have with us Nate Carula, who is the CRO of Bywater Solutions. Hey, everybody. Um, we have with us Josh Barron, who is the Eastern US uh, sales consultant. Hey everyone, um, I'm just going to put my information in chat if uh, you don't know who I am or if we haven't talked and you have any questions afterwards, please feel free uh, to reach out. And finally, Adam Brooks, and he is our Western U.S. sales representative. Hi everyone, I'll put my uh, info in the chat as well and uh, enjoy the demo. Excellent, thank you so much. So um, for those of you who may be um, unfamiliar with Bywater Solutions and what we do, um, we provide support for open source um, products such as Koha, the open source ILS, um, Aspen Discovery, uh, LibKey, which is a kiosk management system, um, and Coral, which is an ERM. And finally, Folio, which is an open source LSP. So our philosophy here at Bywater Solutions is that we want to provide the best support for you, um, and that may be hosting your system, um, the implementation and migration to that product, and then finally, um, any type of education um, to get you live on that product, and then um, any ongoing support after that. Um, we really pride ourselves in making sure that you totally understand the product that you're on. So we offer a ton of um, educational items, um, as well as ongoing training after your live. So anytime there's a new release or updates, um, you'll see that. And some really nice features that we have here in Aspen Discovery is the integration of the Aspen manual right within um, Aspen itself. So if you are you know, trying to figure something out, you can view that manual. And then also the release notes. So you'll be able to see um, what's coming um, or what's been launched in the most current release of the platform. Aspen Discovery um, has been around for several years. It has grown out of um, a version of PICA, um, which was um, hosted and supported by Marmot. And Mark Noble, who is the developer who um, just said hello a few minutes ago, um, he's been working on um, Discovery interfaces um, for over 10 years now. Um, you know, working with librarians and with users to do all types of um, you know, surveys and um, really getting good feedback to build Aspen to what it is today. Um, you know, making sure that they have feedback from users to understand how people are really using a discovery system. So when we look at things like ferberization, um, e-content integration, it's a great way to see just how people are really using things um, within that discovery. Really the, you know, the main goals here for discovery are to maximize that patron usage of all materials. It's so critical in times like today when most of our users are at home, they can't um, you know, leave, we're under these you know, odd um, circumstances and you want your patrons to find everything in one location. Well, we will show you today in Aspen how they can find items that are in the print collection, um, items that may be from third party vendors like Overdrive or Hoopla or recorded books, and then of course integration with um, archives if you have it, or your website, or um, you know, events. So with that said, let's jump into functionality. 
what you're looking at here is um, a basic layout of our model site. You'll notice that we have a logo in the left hand side and we're tying in those colors to really make our logo and our image stand out. Branding is a, an important part of your library and we want to make sure that that is showcased on that main page. So within the administration in Aspen, you can pull in your logo and your look and feel to make the discovery um, feel at ease with just how your website looks. So when they come to the discovery layer, they know that they are at your library catalog. Um, we work with you during that migration process to set it up. And then if you're comfortable, you can go in there and update those things um, anytime throughout the year. Uh, you know, if maybe you're doing a facelift to your logo or whatever it may be. You'll notice again over here on the left hand side where we have that help button. This can also be customized to highlight things like your library hours and locations. If you want to link out to any other um, websites or locations in the system, if you're part of a consortium, you know, you can link out to other information here. You'll also notice that it's really easy for your user to log in, both in this upper right hand corner and over here on the left hand side, um, truly making it easier for them to get in. Aspen is built on a responsive theme, so if your user opened this on their mobile device, um, there would be no need to download an app. They could easily come in here, scroll through, um, browse through collections, uh, log in, check things out. Um, and easily start reading from their phone if they're doing e-content. So again, just a, a real simple way um, to make Aspen available on the go. So let's start with a, a few things on our homepage. Um, once the user gets here, you'll notice there's a search bar right at the top that allows them to come in and perform their search. There's a few different drop-down options that they have. The first starting with keyword. Um, the default in Aspen would be keyword search. However, you'll notice they can also select from a drop down for title or series or author. Next to that, you'll also see a drop down for library catalog and that will search everything in the catalog. However, if they want to drill down, say they're looking for a particular list, you know, maybe every Monday they come in and they look for that New York Times bestseller list. You know, they can come in and just look for things in those particular areas, the website, or if you have archive integration. There is an option for an advanced search. So if your user is looking for something very particular, they can come over to the advanced search where they have options to do um, a more focused search. Um, you'll notice there are some more options here in the drop down menu, which allow them to drill down. Um, and then they have optional filters. So these optional filters will allow them to take it even a step further where they wanna get maybe some specific um, e-content, maybe they really are particular to cloud library if you have multiple platforms, um, if they're looking for a particular um, accelerated reading interest level, they can come in here and look for that, um, or if it's a specific item type. So just a real nice way for them to really drill down and find what they're looking for. You'll also notice on this front page, they can easily come in and start browsing. So you can see we have a few different um, browse options up top um, that allow us to come through and look at available ebooks, e audiobooks, um, movies um, that are available in the platform so they can come in here and kind of just browse through and see what they like. Um, these are called um, collection spotlights, which would allow us to kind of highlight certain things in our collection. Um, I'm just going to drill down here and let you take a look at a couple of these, you'll notice that there's all different types of um, focused categories and you can build those based on your patrons um, and the visibility you wanna give to certain collections. Um, you know, before this pandemic um, happened and we attended the, Pencil, uh, the Public Library Association conference and it was in Nashville and Mark threw together this great um, Nashville browse category so we could have this kind of rotating through. So these are nice things that you can highlight in the collection, especially now when people are at home, you know, you want to know right away what ebooks are available. You don't want them to have to wade through and kind of, you know, find which ones or, you know, they see something pop up and they're like, oh, I wanted to read that. And then they come to find out that it's not available. So giving them what's available in real time is, is fantastic. Now, if you're thinking about the e-content, uh, there's integration with OverDrive, um, recorded books, Hoopla, um, 
one click digital, and I might have repeated myself there. Um, and if you use um, streaming media like Canopy, um, those can be sideloaded. So you can bring all of that e-content integration right into your collection. So let's start by doing a quick search here. I'm going to come in and just do a search uh, for a title here. And you'll notice as I start to type, we get a drop down menu um, that gives us suggestions. So I could select one of those that match my search, or I can just hit that go button and that will bring back a list of results in the collection. Over here on the left hand side, I'm going to have some facets and those facets are going to give me options to narrow down. So again, if I am looking for a particular um, e content provider that I am, you know, I really like using, perhaps I like using that Libby app, I can come in here and select overdrive and then that will drill down to just those particular titles. Um, as part of your migration and setup in Aspen Discovery, we will work with you to set your facets up. There's about 30 that you can choose from and you can arrange the order that these are, making it again easy for your users to find what they're looking for. You'll notice right across the top, you have some icons here that allow you to drill down by a particular type. So if you're looking for a print book or you're looking for an ebook, or you're looking for an audiobook, or maybe you're just ready to curl up and watch a movie. This easily allows you to come in here and, and find what you're looking for. Right underneath there, you'll also see um, the options to check out things that are available right now, meaning I can you know, come in here and, and grab those, and then even taking it a step further. Show me what's available online. I'm ready to read it right in my Kindle, right on my phone. So just a great way to kind of come in here and narrow down what you're looking for. So once we start looking at this particular um, record here, you'll notice that um, we have things grouped together. Aspen does use ferberization, so that will bring together um, my records, rather than having five separate records, let's say one for the print title, one for the large print, one for the e-audio, one for the e-book, and one for the e-audio um, ebook. It's gonna group that together and put everything into one record. So you'll notice now if I come back to that entire collection, um, now I can see that I have an option for a book, an audio um, book, and I can see those locations here. And then as I drill down even further, I can see that e-audio and ebook. Now, the only thing that's not grouped together in this particular record would be media. So a DVD or a Blu-ray would be on a separate, a separate record. Now, the user will be able to tell right away um, if that item is available. So I can see that you know, this particular copy is on shelf um, along with these, and these are available online. You'll notice there's a show edition underneath the format of the book. That will show me any additions that may be available for this particular title. So you can see again, if I do that, that will give me a little expanded view where I can see a little bit more information. Now, if you have multiple branches, you'll notice that there's a couple copies here that, that you may have. If they hit that quick copy view, that will show me any of the available copies. So I can see there's one currently at the East branch and another at the main branch. The user also has options to place items on hold. So again, depending on your circulation rules that you have set up, um, if you allow on shelf holds, you'll notice in this case, in our system we do, um, I can come in and begin that holds process. As I scroll down a little bit further at the bottom of my record, you're gonna have a couple more buttons. The first is gonna be more information. That's gonna take me into a detailed view of the record. The next thing you're gonna see is the option to add a review. If your user um, comes in and would like to you know, write a little blurb about what they thought about the book, they can absolutely do that. Then there's an option here to add it to a list. This is a really nice feature for your users if they like to keep track. Um, you know, maybe they're working on a DIY project or um, they save all the cookbooks that they check out um, or you know, they're reading all of the same author and they wanna keep track. They can add things to a list by creating it and giving it a name and then adding items to that list. The final button you're gonna see here is for social sharing. So if they wanna email it to themselves or share it on Facebook or Pinterest. So let's explore a little more of the more info. 
this will bring me in where I can see that detailed view of the record. Um, so over here, you're going to see the rating. So this is a feature um, that allows users to rate a title from one to five stars, with one being the lowest and five being the highest. If you turn that rating option on, that will then start giving your user recommendations based on um, the titles that they like in the system. So once you start rating things, Aspen will then give you some recommendations for titles that it thinks you might like uh, based on those ratings. As I scroll down a little bit further, now we're going to get into some of that enrichment. You'll notice there I can see a quick description of the title, and then I get right into more like this. Um, with some features of Novelist, if you have a Novelist subscription, you'll be able to see similar titles from Novelist, similar authors from Novelist. I can kind of just scroll through here and, and see some additional um, titles that I might want to read. Um, you'll notice here I can do an expanded view of uh, the subjects, which of course I I can click on and, and link out to other titles um, and then of course additional details and then also looking at those similar titles from Novelist along with those similar authors. One nice um, inclusion here you're going to see is from Goodreads. So, you know, a lot of our patrons or customers um, use Goodreads to keep track um, of what they've read. I know I was just talking to my brother the other day and he's a huge Goodreads fan. Um, and uh, when I showed him this, he was like, this is just awesome being able to see what other people think. So that integration is right on the screen there for you. The last thing you'll notice here is that staff view. So this will give you a little information about the grouped title. Um, and as I scroll down a little bit further, we can see some of the item details um, and then additional mark information. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is we'll do a different search, but this time we're going to log into the system first. So you're, you can see a little bit of the functionality that the user gets. Again, you'll notice right up here in the upper right hand corner, I can click that login and there's a few things. Um, let's say the user forgot what their password is. You'll see here there is an option to reset their password um, and maybe they don't have a card yet. They are new to the area. They just moved. They can come in here and select that register for a new library card. So again, integrating easy ways for them to get into the catalog even if they may have forgotten or they're new to the system. Once they do log into the system, um, you notice they do have options to reveal the password or remember me. This will take them in um, where they can see their account. So right away, I can tell that I do have a $5 fine um, in the system. I can click on that uh, red link and that'll take me in where I can see what kind of um, fine that I have. We do have integration with PayPal um, and this allows the user to log into their PayPal account um, and make a payment which will get sent back um, to the library system or of course they can pay with a debit or credit card. Um, some of the other things they'll see when they log into their account are going to be um, any titles that they physically have checked out and then any titles that they have checked out um, online. So here you can see I have um, seven total um, and then I can even take it a step further. So it shows me the physical material that I have checked out giving me a nice little reminder that this one is due in five days. Um, and then I have my link for RB Digital. So here's some um, electronic titles that I have checked out. You'll notice it shows right away um, the option to open it in RB Digital, I can download it, I can renew it if that option is available, and then I can also return it. Um, so if I do click that button, um, it will tell me if my title was returned successfully. And then I can scroll back in and view a little more information. So again, giving your user some really nice option for them to view information right away. So if I was on my phone, I could open it up. Or if I was on my you know, desktop or laptop, I can open that up into a new view and start reading that title. You can see right now I don't have any checked out with Cloud Library, so that's giving me a, um, a null view. As I scroll down a little bit further, you'll notice I do have titles on hold. So again, it gives me a nice breakdown where I can see what I have physically on hold. And then if I did have any um, electronically, I'd be able to see that as well. So as I scroll through, I can see any 
holds that are ready for pickup. So I have one um, here that's available for a quick pickup. And you'll notice that there's a button over here called While You Wait. This will show me other titles that are ready to be checked out while I'm waiting for that. So even though my preserved flowers isn't available, maybe I wanna come in and look at the um, country flower drying um, and check that one out. So it's gonna give them suggestions um, for that particular one. And as I scroll down a little bit further, I can even see those pending holds. So things that haven't been triggered or trapped yet. From this view, I can um, cancel my hold if I no longer need it. So let's say I didn't need this one anymore, I can cancel it. Um, and of course, you also have the option to freeze a hold that's very similar to suspending. So um, you, know, you temporarily wanna be taken off the list and then maybe come uh, back in at a different time, you're going on vacation. Now that we talked a little bit about that management, let's do a few more searches. Let's talk about how things look um, when you have multiple editions. So let's say I'm going to do a search for Pride and Prejudice. When I bring this title back in the collection, um, you know, you may have multiple editions of this title, um, special, um, special edition, special large print, things like that. This is really nice where instead of having, you know, 10 or 11 different records for Pride and Prejudice, you have one and the user can specify which one they're looking for. So if I hit that show editions, you'll notice here that now I have one from, you know, 1980, uh, 1906, 1915, 1995. And you can see those multiple editions for that one title. And again, as I scroll down, you know, maybe I have a large print as well. And I'm, I'm just interested in that. If I hit show editions, you know, I can see those multiple editions that are listed. So it just gives a nice way to really, um, you know, break that out in the system. Let's talk about some of the integration that your user will see if you bring in things for, from your website. Um, you know, a lot of times we have classes on our website, we have special information, we have databases that we know are not getting utilized because, you know, people just may not know about them. Um, one that I really always like to talk about is like, you know, Freegal um, music and Mango languages. When I worked at a library, I remember that it was always hard for people to remember or know that they had access to these things. If they came into the library, we had signs everywhere. But, you know, it was always hard to get it into the catalog. So, for example, if I do a search for music, you can highlight what we call placards. Um, and they have a way of showing an image and then you can put language that will alert your users. And in this case, this one says, looking for music, don't forget to check out Freegal. Um, and then they can click the link and go right out to Freegal from the site. So essentially when you're creating these placards, you can give them trigger words or keywords. So if somebody searches for that, it will bring these back. So I have one in here too for languages. So again, if I do a search for um, languages, you know, Mango comes up. So again, there's just really nice ways to highlight things that you may not have a record for in the catalog, but you want that information to come up so your users are aware. Another really great example is if you have um, meeting rooms or group rooms or study rooms um, that you're library allows your patrons to come in and reserve for a certain period of time, um, you know, maybe you want that kind of stuff to show up in your results. So another good example is, you know, like meeting rooms. Um, if I do a search for something in the um, catalog, you'll know that I get, you'll notice that I get um, a couple of results and then I have an explore more section. This is a nice way to kind of integrate other pieces of um, your website or archival material um, in your collection. So you'll notice here that I have some archive results, I have some web pages, um, and then I have a link to meeting minutes and finance meeting. So if you index your website, it will bring results in um, and then your users can take it a step further. further. If I click on this finance meeting, you'll notice this takes me out. This is one of our users, Uinta County in Utah. Um, this links out to their digital library. So you'll notice you can see that, that image right away. So, you know, they can see those results. 
Um, so just a nice way to really integrate that into your collection, whether it's a, um, you know, a meeting room reservation, maybe links out to some archival material um, or web pages that match your results in the system. Okay, so earlier I mentioned those New York Times bestseller list. Um, again, I remember when I worked at the library, Overdrive um, was one of my daily tasks. And every like Monday morning, we would update the list of the new New York Times bestseller. There is an API built into Aspen, which will go out and it will look for those um, New York Times bestseller and it will find if any of those are available in your collection. So now rather than having to go in there and update those lists, it will pull that information in. So right now I have six titles in my collection that are also on the New York Times bestseller fiction collection. If I switch over to nonfiction, you can see I have a few and then, you know, taking it a little bit further of, you know, any business and you can make as many of these as you want. Um, whatever is prevalent in your collection and making that stand out. So again, just a really nice way to highlight certain, um, things in your collection, making it really easy uh, for your users to see that information. Now let's talk a little bit about um, some of the things you may see here. So these cover images, um, there is a free source that you can use for Google Jackets and um, that will look at the ISBN uh, number and bring in a Google Jacket, so essentially a free source. If you do use things like Syndetics or Content Cafe, um, that um, can be set up to bring those images in. There's also um, OMDB, which will um, go out and look for free um, movie images. Um, so you can bring those into your collection too. So Mark has really built in a lot of ways to really um, have that, that image um, stick out for both you know, print covers, and then of course, um, cover images for um, those movie titles as well. All right, I'm gonna jump back into my account and let's talk about a few other things here. So reading history, depending on what your policy is at your library, if you anonymize circulation history, um, maybe you don't have this feature turned on for your patrons. If you do um, keep the history and your users would like to see it, you do have an option here. You'll notice it's called um, reading history and there's a couple options that tie in here. If I hit this stop recording my reading history, you know, maybe this is the first time I'm coming in, I'm presented with a message that lets me know that, you know, the libraries takes privacy seriously and it kind of gives me a breakdown about what my reading history is they have an option to start recording their reading history. So if they click that, this will show them um, previous titles that they have checked out in the system or anything that they have checked out. And the really nice feature here is, not only is it the print collection, but also e-integration. So I can see titles that I've checked out from RB Digital, I can see um, titles that I've checked out from the library, um, and and it's just a really nice way for them to see what they've done. Um, you know, a lot of times you may be only able to see the print version, but in here they can see all versions of what they've checked out, not only if it's Overdrive or recorded books, or Cloud Library or Hoopla, um, but they can also see that print information. You'll notice they can easily export it. So if they want to take it out and, you know, add those titles to Goodread, whatever it may be, um, they have that option. They can delete them um, at any time and that would remove it. They of course do get a little pop-up letting them know that if they do click this, um, it would delete their entire reading history. Um, as I scroll down a little bit further, we have that finds and messages. Again, this is gonna be what we were looking at before where they have that integration with PayPal um, so they can come in. If your library does not use um, PayPal or a um, a third party to collect fines and fees, of course, that wouldn't be visible. Right below that fines and fees, we're gonna see materials requested. This is like a purchase suggestion. So your user can come in here, they can click on that submit 
um, new materials, and this would allow them to come in and submit a new purchase suggestion in the collection. So it gives them a basic form where they can fill that out and send that back to the staff members, and then um, of course you can approve or reject that um, suggestion in the system. The next thing we'll talk a little bit about is those titles that we've rated. So when we were looking at that record before, we saw those um, one to five star ratings. So this really allows us to come in and kind of see what we've um, reviewed in the system. So you can see we kind of have quite a few here um, with various levels of stars. They can, of course, clear those out at any time. Um, but once we start making those uh, ratings, you'll notice that now we have recommended titles. So they can come in here and view those recommended recommended titles um, and a list of things that they may want to check out. Hmm, I didn't read this one yet, but I did read it. So, you know, this is a nice, a really nice feature for your users to come in um, and get some more titles that they may be interested in. Okay, now that we've looked at the some of the basic settings, let's talk about um, preferences for your users. Under account settings, they're gonna see some additional preferences. So the first is their main location. So if you're a single branch, you know, they, they may just have their, um, their branch listed here, but if you're a multi-branch or consortium, um, they can select maybe their main location that they pick it up from and if they work or have family close to another branch, maybe they frequent that one, um, you know, second, you can actually set a second location up. Contact information would pull in any of their contact information if they need to update, let's say an email or a phone number, followed by their messaging preferences. Now, I do want to point out that um, this model site that we have set up is connected to Koha ILS. Um, so these are Koha's um, internal settings for messaging settings. So dependent on what your um, you know, ILSs that you're using, we'll be able to set those messaging preferences up. Here you can see I do have options for email or SMS, and these are what we refer to as proactive messages. So I can set my settings as to which ones I would like to receive, you know, when I want that advanced notice, and then I can update those settings here as well. The last thing you're going to see under account settings is linking accounts. This is a feature for um, families or if you have individuals where they may be the caretaker of their parents um, or maybe an aunt or, aunt or uncle or a partner, um, individuals can link their accounts. So, it, you know, they'll get a little message here that lets them know that linked accounts let you maintain multiple accounts for the library. Um, so you can see all of your information in one location. So if I was to, let's say, add another account here, I would be able to not only see my information, but also the other account that I have linked into my system. Um, so now you can see that my fines have gone up to $16.50 from $5. So when I click on that, um, this will show me not only my finds, but then also my partner's finds. So I can see that information here. Um, and as I scroll down and we look at those checked out titles, again, you'll be able to see not only can I see my titles, um, but also um, the, my partner's titles. So just a nice way to kind of um, see multiple things in there. You can turn link accounts off. So if that's something that you did not want to offer to your users, you can absolutely turn that feature off. The last thing you're going to see down here, of course, is um, search history. So I can come in here and look at a list of things that I've searched for in the system. So now if I wanted to go back and, and look at that, um, search feature for Gone Girl, I can come back in here and look at that record. A few more things I want to point out before we move into the administrative side of, of Aspen. Um, there's some really nice features for the user if they like a particular author. So let's say I've read Gone Girl and I'm interested in seeing, you know, maybe what else she's read. If I click on that author's last name, that will take me to the author page. 
where um, there's a little API that's set up with Wikipedia that will pull in um, information about this particular title. You'll notice right below here it says provided by Wikipedia and it just gives us a little more information about this user. Um, so now as I scroll down I can see any other additional titles that we may have by Jillian Flynn. So just a great way, I can remember people would always come in and ask for a, a particular author and you know they're like well I've read all five of these books you know are there any that I missed again just a really nice way for them to come in and and drill down and see what other um, titles are available in the system okay I'm gonna pause here for a minute and just ask if we have any questions about the user interface um, what your patrons see how um, searching functionality works and um, you know, you can use that chat box um, or the Q&A on there. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer those real quick before we jump into administration. Okay, I'm gonna jump into admin then. So as I log in, um, you are given permissions to access the administrative side of uh, Aspen Discovery. So um, as a librarian, I would be given permissions to come in and access certain parts of um, the Aspen interface. So you'll notice right under here where we were looking at that search history in my lists, it starts getting into system administration. The first being that system admin uh, portal. So this gives me access to things like where I can set my administrators up. Solar information is the um, indexer or the search mechanism within Aspen. And then of course, other things that allow me to set my system up. Followed by some system reports. So you'll see the first one here is the usage dashboard. Um, and this is really nice because you can come in here at any time um, throughout the day and look at page views within your system, requests, cover requests, um, you know, for those cover images, grouped work searches, um, user list searches, and so on. You do not have to use um, things like Google Analytics or Matumbo. This is built right into your Aspen interface, making it really easy to kind of look at some of these hits or these numbers to see like how things are increasing um, within your catalog. There's also various um, reports that are built in, um, nightly index logs, which will look to see um, how indexing is going, um, er any type of error reports in the system. So you can easily look at that information. Next, we have some configure configuration templates. So this is where you would customize um, things for the Aspen um, catalog. So if I click on themes, you'll be able to see um, my color setup for this particular uh, layout in the system. And then of course, any type of um, grouped or browse categories for my users on that main page. Under primary configuration, um, you're going to see options for languages, um, of course, um, setting up my library system, and then any type of account profiles. Under enrichment, this is where we're going to get down into some third party products. So, um, that author enrichment, where you saw the connection to Wikipedia, setting up those placards that I was talking about earlier, you know, as far as like Frigo or Mango Languages, you can see we have a couple in here. There's one for Consumer Reports. Um, other things like your novelist settings, or if you subscribe to Syndetix, that New York Times API, um, and then additional settings in here. Um, cataloging, again, this is where those grouped work mergings would take place. Um, you know, sometimes um, you'll find one or two titles that may have not grouped properly. You can go in and manually um, group those. The next thing you'll see is your ILS integration. So this is where, depending on what ILS you are on, this is where that um, connection will take place. Then we have individual settings for some of our e-content providers. So here you can see um, our OverDrive setup, RB Digital, and then of course, Cloud Library. Again, if you have Hoopla, that's another option that we could set that up as well. Um, Side-loaded e-content. So for e-content providers that don't have API connections, um, the 
the beauty between the beauty of the API connections is you're bringing in real time results. So you no longer have to upload those records into your system. Um, you know, when you upload those records, then you have to keep track of, you know, which one of those e records have hit their 25 licenses. Um, if you no longer have access to a particular record because, you know, again, something changed with the publisher, you'd have to remember to go in and, and delete those out. With API connectivity, you don't have to worry about that. It's real-time availability. However, there's some um, providers that do not have an API setup. Canopy is one of them. Um, so this allows you to just bring those records from Canopy directly into the Aspen interface so they are searchable. Um, good news for Canopy is though, I know we did talk to them at PLA and um, they are hopefully working on an API in the future. The next thing you'll see here is open archives. Um, so if you're using any type of archival integration, we'll be able to add that in. Um, and then of course, website indexing. And then finally, any type of circulation holds reports. Now the last thing you'll see here at the bottom is our Aspen Discovery Help. And that is going to link you again to that help manual in the system. Um, so you can come in and, and if there's a certain area that you're looking for, you can click on that and that will take you into um, that section of the manual where you can see a little bit more information. Uh, there's all types of um, videos too. We have, we're growing the collection of videos like with how to um, in the collection. So you could do that right within the Aspen interface. And then of course the other thing is going to be those release notes. Um, so anytime there's a new release, you'll be able to see that. And in fact, Aspen um, 20.07 um, is about to be launched. And you can see here, it gives us just a good breakdown about everything that has um, been updated in this particular release. Okay, well, I wanted to leave some time here at the end for questions. Um, so if you have questions for us about functionality, um, integration, or um, you know anything that we can answer future developments, we'd be happy to answer those questions for you. Well, okay. Well, I'd like to thank everyone out there for joining us today for the introduction to Aspen Discovery. Uh, this will be recorded, so we'll send you a link to the recording. Um, if you want to share it with any of your colleagues, um, please do. And if we can answer any other questions, um, please let us know. Both Adam and Josh's contact information are in that chat box, um, and we'd be happy to answer those questions. Have a great day, everyone, and stay safe. Thank you.